Hi, this is Chao Wei Huang and Steve Williams from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about the Collat stenting technique for coronary bifurcations. The patient is a 55-year-old man with hypertension and hyperlipidemia. He has coronary artery disease and is status plus a cabbage. He had a lima to the LED, a vein graft to an OM, and a vein graft to the PDA. Um, he presented to his cardiologist uh, with recurrent angina, and he is on a uh, re reasonable medical regimen. He underwent a stress echo, which showed evidence of lateral wall ischemia. Uh, the baseline EF was normal. Uh, he was thus referred uh, by his cardiologist uh, for coronary angiography and possible PCI. So on the diagnostic angiogram, the lima to the LED and the vein graft to the PDA were both patent. Um, the vein graft to the OM, however, was 100% occluded at its ostium. Here you see the native uh, left circumflex system, uh, which is severely diseased uh, with a Medina 011 bifurcation disease in the mid circumflex and OM bifurcation. Um, there are also several uh, severe stenoses uh, in both distal limbs of the bifurcation uh, with more disease uh, further distally as well. So um, what is your strategy? So here are the most common uh, bifurcation stenting techniques, and each have uh, advantages and drawbacks. Uh, T-stenting uh, is uh, probably the easiest uh, bifurcation technique, uh, but unless the side branch uh, uh, takes off at close to 90 degrees from the main branch, um, the ostium at the side branch uh, will be left uh, uncovered. A tap uh, is a modification of T-stenting, and I did uh, another YouTube uh, video on this. Uh, tap is uh, also fairly straightforward, uh, and unlike T-stenting, it does provide good coverage of the bifurcation. However, it will leave a small neocarina behind and is really best suited uh, for larger bifurcation angles and smaller side branches. Um, crush uh, is a very common technique uh, with uh, several different variations, and it is very well studied. Uh, but crush uh, will leave up to three layers of mangled stent uh, in the main branch um, and rewiring and passing equipment into the side branch for uh, final kissing uh, angioplasty uh, can often be quite challenging. Uh, kissing stents, uh, which I don't show here, uh, is usually uh, only used in emergency, uh, mostly because it leaves behind a very large neocarina, uh, making uh, future PCI procedures you know, very challenging. And then there's a culotte, uh, which uh, we'll talk about in detail uh, next. So uh, culotte stenting uh, is a very versatile uh, bifurcation technique, uh, which supports all bifurcation angles uh, with full coverage of the bifurcation. Now, it does require that both branches of the bifurcation be comparable in size. Uh, so practically, this just means that you have to be able to dilate the side branch stent to the size of the main branch stent. So for instance, if uh, let's say you're using Zion stent, uh, you uh, should not do culotte if the main branch is 4.0 millimeters and the side branch is 2.25 millimeters because you can't really take a 2.25 millimeter stent all the way up to 4.0. However, uh, culotte is feasible if the main branch stent were only uh, 3.5 millimeters since you could dilate a 2.25 millimeter up to 3.5 millimeter. So um, there are uh, two variations of culotte, uh, true culotte and uh, reverse culotte. Uh, true culotte uh, is used uh, in a primary uh, two stent strategy uh, where essentially you're going in intending to stent both branches. Uh, in this case, uh, the first stent uh, is uh, deployed in the side branch, uh, that is the branch uh, that has the greatest angulation. After the side branch is well post-dilated, uh, the main branch stent is then deployed through the stent cell of the side branch stent, and therefore its proximal part ends up concentrically inside the proximal part of the side branch stent. Um, the other variation is reverse culotte, uh, which is used in a uh, provisional stenting strategy, where you go in intending to only stent uh, the main branch and uh, you would only stent the um, side branch if it became uh, absolutely necessary. So in this case, for reverse culotte, the first stent is deployed in the main branch. And after nicely post-dialing the main branch stent, if necessary, the side branch stent is deployed. 
and therefore its proximal part ends up concentrically inside the proximal part of the main branch stent. Okay, so we'll now go through each step of uh, how to do a true culotte. So step one, uh, both uh, the main branch and the side branch are wired and uh, balloon dilated. In step two, uh, deploy the first stent into the more angulated branch, uh, which we'll call the side branch. Um, this stent will then jail the main branch wire, which should then be removed. Now, one reason that you want to stent the angulated branch first is that it is easier uh, to recross into the straighter main branch. Recrossing uh, into a side branch uh, uh, can uh, be uh, uh, challenging. Step three, uh, you uh, post dilate the side branch. Uh, you then rewire the main branch through the side branch stent cell and then dilate open the stent cell. Now, the post dilation step is actually really key here. Uh, you really want to make sure that you very well oppose the proximal section of the stent to the vessel wall. This will make it less likely that your new main branch wire ends up underneath the stent you've just placed. And when you run into trouble in culotte cases, I find that this is often what happens. Sometimes I will even uh, do IVIS or OCT at this point to make sure that the side branch stent is really well opposed before even attempting to rewire the main branch. Step four, uh, remove the side branch wire and deploy the main branch stent, uh, overlapping the side branch stent, uh, you know, proximally. And step five, uh, post dilate the main branch stent. As before, make sure that the main branch stent is well opposed to the vessel wall, especially proximally uh, before rewiring the side branch. And finally, after uh, the side branch is rewired through the main branch stent cell, you do a final kissing angioplasty um, and then followed by pot. And then that's it. All right, so, so back to our patient. So looking at our angiogram again, we have a, um, a Medina 011 bifurcation here with severe disease in both branches of the bifurcation. The branches here are both reasonably comparable in size. The bifurcation angle is kind of acute, uh, probably too acute for a technique like TAP. So culotte uh, seems to be quite reasonable here. Um, so we went to work. Uh, we wired both the CERC and OM, and then dilated the CERC as well as the OM. And here's the result after um, initial balloon angioplasty. You can see that the proximal part of the OM appears a little bit dissected. So in case uh, you're on the fence at this point about whether you wanted to do provisional stenting with this dissection now, a two stent strategy is, is really needed. And both the CERC and the OM uh, will have to be stented. Um, we um, went ahead and stented the disease uh, distal circumflex first, and then placed an overlapping stent in the mid circ uh, you know, gelling the uh, OM. After the uh, circ stent was deployed, uh, we post dilated it and aggressively post dilated the uh, proximal segment of the circ stent to ensure good apposition to the vessel wall. Again, uh, this step is really key. Uh, good apposition reduces the chance of passing your wire underneath the stent strut when you're trying to rewire the uh, OM. And uh, remember to reach for OCT or IBIS uh, if you do run into trouble. Uh, this can help you figure out uh, where your wires are. After uh, post dilating the circ stent, uh, we uh, rewire the gelled OM through the circ stent cell. And then uh, we went ahead and uh, uh, dilated open the stent cell so that a new stent uh, can be passed. Uh, next, uh, we uh, removed the circ wire and placed the other stent from the mid circ into the OM and that jails the uh, distal circ. Again, we uh, went ahead and aggressively post dilated the OM stent now, making sure that we are very well opposed, especially proximally before uh, we uh, rewire uh, the circ. After uh, post dilating the OM stent, uh, we rewire the circ through the OM stent cell and set up for uh, final kissing uh, balloon uh, angioplasty. And finally, we uh, perform final kissing angioplasty uh, followed by POT. And uh, here is uh, the uh, final angiographic result. Uh, which uh, we thought was uh, quite satisfactory. 
All right, so uh, some evidence. Um, there is a lot of data and trials out there uh, comparing a provisional stenting with a, a primary uh, two-stent strategy with many of the uh, studies favoring uh, provisional stenting. However, uh, there is this study uh, that just came out, Definition 2, uh, it's published in the European Heart Journal in 2020. Uh, in, def uh, in Definition 2, they enrolled 653 patients uh, with uh, true uh, complex bifurcation lesions, uh, Medina-111 uh, or Medina-011. And they used uh, crush and culotte techniques, primarily crush, uh, for their bifurcation stenting. And uh, the authors showed that uh, essentially for true complex bifurcation lesions, a primary two-stent strategy using crush or culotte uh, led to uh, lower uh, target lesion revascularization, uh, lower target vessel MI, and overall lower target lesion failure uh, compared uh, to a uh, provisional strategy. All right, so uh, some take home messages. Um, culotte stenting is a, a flexible bifurcation technique that is suitable for both a, a primary two stent strategy in a case of true culotte or a provisional strategy uh, in a case of reverse culotte. Um, culotte stenting can be used for any bifurcation angle, but with the caveat uh, that the side branch cannot be too small uh, because you have to be able to dilate the side branch stent up to the size of the main branch. Culotte can be uh, technically challenging uh, since both branches have to be rewired. And in my opinion, one of the main drawbacks of culotte is that you will temporarily lose wire access to the main branch during the procedure. So again, a reminder, uh, before rewiring either the main branch or the side branch through the stent cell, really make sure that the stent is well opposed, especially proximally. This will reduce the chance of having a wire go under the stent and getting you in trouble. And remember, if you do get into trouble and run into problems, have a low threshold to use OCT or IVIS. Uh, these can help you to figure out exactly where your wires are. Thank you for watching.